Hello, everyone. Oh, wow, I am on this. Uh-oh. Pop open my ear ration. Yeah. Free advertisement, perhaps. American Pale Ale. I own the slightest and the best, but. Ah, oh, so good. Welcome again to the Hobo and his Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. Right back there, you see my little kitty cat? He's there. I kind of woke up from that because a lizard got in the house. And she likes to hunt lizards. So I kind of roused her from watching stuff outside. Go on a lizard hunt. But let's not talk about that. Let's talk about some pro wrestling. In fact, let's talk about Lucha Underground. But first, before we go into some Lucha Underground, let's have one. You will be able to see me, Hobo Tom, in Sanford, Florida, at the Sanford Civic Center. On Friday, September 21st, for NXT. There's an NXT house show there. Should be interesting. Hopefully it's better than the one here in Daytona Beach. Hopefully security is better. Then I shall call them very bad things again. Which I already apologized for. Ooh. But today's Thursday. You know what that means, folks. Beer ration. One can of beer. Has to be good stuff. And it was just Labor Day. So my paps, an American style beer. Shout out to Dan. Then paps blue ribbon. Decent stuff. But let's not that's enough about that. These people probably dock. Thankfully, I'm not monetized yet. Let's talk about some lucha underground. Again. This is kind of like the normal show, and it's good. And then you have about a two-minute long recap. And Aerostar knows the Kamehameha technique, as from the Turtle School. And again, we start off with the El Generico Bang! I just like to say that they remind me of El Generico and they all wear wrestling masks. So the first match, the evening, is for the Gift of the Gods Championship. It is an amazing looking game. Lucha Underground, for the most part, has amazing belts. I mean, I've tried to make a belt. The best girlfriend, the bestest girlfriend ever belt. Still by far and away the best belt I've ever seen. Even better than the than Stephen Larson's H Championship. Adam Mann is a very deserving champion, but it's an okay belt. One I have to figure out. Well, I need money to get stuff. But let's talk about this match instead. We have all read everything Ivelisse. Dragonus Chaka Jr. Again, this was a very good match. It was a very strike heavy match. And it was weird because, again, there's good rope running by both. But again, not, 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 not a lot of what you would think as technical wrestling skills. A lot of strikes, a lot of kicks. Yeah, you have your clotheslines. But again, it kind of looked really heavy. And Ivelisse was kind of working pretty stiff looking. Um, I know kind of my one knock on this match, and I had this knock on Johnny Mundo when he took on the Sexy Star, and that is Dragon Azteca, and for a whole bunch of acceptable reasons, he seemed to be really pulling his punch. He pulling his punches. I mean, not going as hard as he could, 
Um, again, he, he really seemed to be to hold back. He seemed like a half step behind. But I think it's just because it's Ivelisse. And it just didn't seem, he just didn't seem as crisp. He didn't seem as comfortable going against a woman as he has male counterparts. And yeah, there's a lot of good reasons why. But, I mean, it was a good match. I mean, Ivelisse hit, the, hit the, a Lucha Destroyer. Amazing move. Again, he just seemed to kick out. I mean, he seemed, I don't want to say disinterested, but again, he just seemed like that half step off. I mean, if you watch the Johnny Mundo versus Sexy Star match, I think from season two, late season two, early season three, it just... You could really, t you could really tell that Johnny Mundo was really trying to go out of his way to protect her, and Dragon Azteca it was, was kind, of, it was the same thing. Um, again, so it was a, it was a good match. Uh, eventually, Dragon Azteca got on the top rope, kind of gave Evilise a headbutt, and just kind of went like the crowd, the leg drop from the top rope. Again, leg drops one of the many moves of death. So then Dragon has second one. And I mean, it was a sol it was a solid match. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't know if I could do any better. I, mean, I you know, I'd probably pull my punches with Eva Lisa a little bit. I mean, she, she is a woman. I am a, a a bigger. I don't want to say stronger because pound for pound, she would probably be. More muscular than me. Yeah, it might be stronger. Again, just size wise, there'd be more be behind my my strikes. So I so I probably pull a little bit too. Again, if if I did the the the, the hobo splash, or the hobo salt, probably worried about killing her, breaking a rib or something. Hobo. Oh, This was kind of a real well before I get to the end, what happened at the end. This was a really solid match. It was a cheeseburger match.
And then at the end, there was a tease for a new trios group. Joey Ryan. I can see you, Matt. Well, I can tell you that was one hell of an effort. And I know you want gold. And it just so happens that Joey and I, we want gold too. <clears throat> Since you're known for unlikely trios, how about you team up with us? And whichever team leave with the trios titles tonight. Well, they can face us next. Because as far as I'm concerned, you, me, Joey, as trio champs, well, that sounds exolicious. What do you say, girl? And this new trios group would consist of all red, everything, Ivelisse, Exolicious, and the one, the only, the perverted, Joey Ryan. That just seems like a fun trios, trios, trio up, or trace up. New trios, trio up, or new trios, trace up. Something like that. You know what I mean. Um, and it was, it was really good. Then for our next match of the evening, we have King Quino, who for a change didn't come out with his deer head on or any other traffic. I mean, he's going very plain versus the man of a thousand deaths, Mil Muertes. And for the most part, I mean, this was, I mean, Mil just started to chase him. Um, Antonio Cuerno came out and said, 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 King, said, King Cuerno, you're going to be facing an old hated rival of yours. And the winner of, the, of this match is going to face Pentagon Jr. Because obviously King Cuerno in the previous episode came out, beat up Pentagon Jr., whatever his move was called. And again, earn, in Antonio's eyes, earned a championship. But he said, eh, eh. This guy doesn't like you either. So again, Mill shows up, just chases him. You can really see that Mill has a new fire ever since he just ever since he just murdered Katrina. He like dropped her from like a seven story building. He just said Oh, I forget what he said, but he gave her the, the rock and said the, the, have this remind me of you or something or something like that. And this is very good. Um, Mills was semi no selling the whole match. He showed some effects moves, but overall he would just like bounce up, which is what you expect. And Matt Stryker is so good on commentary. He started to talk about like the Nazca lines, the ancient Aztecs, how pyramids were built. I mean, I think he did that. For, I think for his other other match. Let's match the alliteration and the descriptive adjectives and the ambiance that he gives this match was just amazing. I mean, Master Strikers was so good. He would be on one of my all time commentary teams with him and Vampiro. And if you saw Triple Mania or, or Triple Botchamania, Matt Stryker was having so much fun at Vampire's expense, just laughing it off. I know very quickly you can watch the whole thing on, on YouTube, and I I do regret not watching it, or at least not. Didn't again AAA? It's in it's in Mexico. It's like Triple Mania is their WrestleMania, but there was one instance. Where Vampiro was waiting for his entrance music so he could make make his grand entrance, 
And you can tell Master Riker. And Vampiro is just waiting for his entrance music so it can be that much more impactful. <laughs> you see him literally <laughs> burst out laughing at Vampiro's utter disgust for the lack of production and professionalism for Triple Mania. You know, at one, one point, Vampiro wanted to get the Spanish announcer's opinion about it. And the Spanish announcer's just did not pay any attention to him. And, and Matt Stryker says, like, well, maybe they don't understand the question. Maybe they're so involved with giving the Spanish-speaking audience their due. And it was... <laughs> You can tell that Piero was royally pissed and flustered. And Matt Stryker was just like, tranquilo. Just there, yeah. Having fun. <laughs> Glad I'm not part of this organization full time. Man, this was a really hard hitting. Match. I mean, really, just came to trading strikes. Obviously, the price and rise is much different from the sports side of things. It will be the power of Mil Muertes against the speed and high flying offense of King Cuerno. I, I, I think power is an understatement. Mill is just a beast. sport of favor is it's the quicker team against the tougher team that Mil Muertes pounds away at King Cuerno I I, I, I just remember I, I, I just saw Jurassic Park in front of me and the Tyrannosaurus Rex is just ripping the train apart trying to get somebody from the inside to eat them I think it would obviously behoove Cuerno to stay out of striking range by Mil Muertes there Use moves such as that right there. Tilt the world backbreaker. I disagree with you. I think if a beast is on you and you show fear, they can smell that. I think somebody who hunts understands this. And the only way that you conquer that is to go blow for blow, strike for strike. As the believers are divided right down the middle. So much history between these two fighters and the believers that have been here since the beginning. They, they, they respect and revere these new champions. That striker is so good. And look at Mill, almost human, enjoying it. How dare he? No more face, of course, representing death. There's a connection there, but there you go. Oh, man. Just a gurgle of aggression. Are you enjoying this? You're kind of just staring at it. I think that you're kind of a little intimidated, my friend. No more days can take advantage of anything that is given to him by his opponent. I believe that Mill is committing a mistake. But turning his back, do you think? To somebody who prides himself on being the hunter, waits for a oh, high knee strike there. Thank you. Mill Muertes. The point where they went outside the ring? And they just started trading blows there. And the, the poor referee, Marty Elias, I would not want to get between these two. He just said, listen, get back to the ring. They looked at each other, looked at the ref, and knocked him down. He called for the bell, ding, ding, ding. You know what that means, folks? We have a death death finish, baby. Nobody wins. But this is Lucha Underground. And in this case, both people won. Even though there was a rough bump, I mean, again, you don't want to get between two big guys. And you don't want to tell two big guys what to do. But again, the call for the bell is a double DQ, baby, with a dusty finish. But this is the first dusty finish that I can remember for a very long time since, since the Dusty Rhodes wrestling the NWA, baby. This is Ric Flair and, and Vader, a big, bad, nasty boy, Vader. But this was a surf and turf match.
I mean, mainly due to the fact that it makes me want to watch. I want to see the next episode. Again, why did the referee get between these two big, burly, manly men? Could probably eat me or eat parts for dinner after they ripped it off my body and roasted over an open fire. There's some images for you. Again, <laughs> as Antonio <laughs> is making his announcement, Mills is just there <laughs> flexing the whole time. It was such a good image. Saying, yeah. And again, this again leads up to next week's triple threat match between Mel Muertes, Queen Cuerno, and Pentagon Dark. And of course, Pentagon Dark is just standing up top while these two are like fighting into like some like meat cooler. And the crowd's going, Cero Miedo. The whole time round. Very good stuff. Cerro Miedo. Very few phrases I know in Spanish, but that's one of them. And then we have our main event of the evening, where you have kind of like the, the Lucha friends, or the Super Lucha friends, Aerostar, Drago, and Phoenix, versus the Reptile Tribe. And when Phoenix came out, he came out like Zombie Phoenix. I know he was supposed to be kind of kind of reincarnated, but I mean, Melissa just didn't look happy through the whole thing. She would stare at Phoenix and have, like, sad f I mean, Jake Strong came out and said, oh, if, if, if you th you three won, I'm going to have a one-on-three match, and I'm going to hold all trios championship. Yeah, that, that was clever. It would be neat to see probably Jake Strong face Phoenix and then just have Phoenix no-sell whatever he does and, and beat him. So that would be good. That was hubris. Other than that, I mean, the match itself was really good. Drago's amazing. I mean, he has his ring presence. He has his, his very fast pace. Aerostar is... I, I couldn't even believe that. I believe I'm saying this, but Aerostar is even faster. I mean, then, the very traditional Lucha style. I mean, Drago has a great Lucha style. Phoenix has Rudo style. Again, remember, in Lucha Libra, you don't have the baby face. The heel, you have the Rudo and the Technical. And again, this looks like just like Dark Phoenix. In fact, it looked like Heel Phoenix. That's good. Anything good is. I mean, this is just so short of being a Flaming Young match. Again, this again is a Surf and Turf match. I mean, that was some great action in it. It was fun. There were tags, blind tags. They were trying to egg Phoenix in, trying to get Phoenix into the match. Then you have the happy technicos. They're all excited to be back in the ring together. And Phoenix is just, they're very methodical, very plotting, very rudo. -ish. Normally, you would, you would see a, a fighter immediately reach 
for the tag, but, but Drago almost seems to like the fact that he's back and fighting for himself. He definitely does not like the thumb in the eye, though. No, and you can see Aerostar is very confident to have Drago back. But sure. another thing that well, Aerostar's not even paying attention to. like he doesn't really understand why he's doing what he's doing where he's at look at phoenix <laughs> oh man the bird of war Jeremiah Snake is still the legal member of the reptile team. Phoenix is just frothing at the mouth. Frothing. More intense, Phoenix, as you have astutely pondered and noticed. Uh-oh. May have missed his hand there. What? Ooh. Hard kick. Aerostar is legal now. And now Aerostar. Cosmos. Of course... History buffs remember the Nephilim, the giants that roamed the earth before the flood. Some people talk about the Pleiadians and the Greys and the Draconians. Perhaps maybe Aerostar. Again, you have the tr more traditional Rudos in, in the Reptile Tribe, and that's represented by Cobra Moon, Drago, and... Snake. We got his first name. Not Sammy Snake. I think. Or Jake Snake. I forget. But it's really Sammy Callahan. And then Phoenix turns heel. Hit like a muscle buster driver onto Aerostar. Now he's heel. He's Rudo. Dark Phoenix. Ooh, I like that. Again, just send me a quarter. Lucha Underground. Mark Burnett Production. Um, again, Melissa Santos. Like she's like absolutely dumb, dumbfounded. Again, you know Phoenix went heel because he shoved Melissa Santos down, and then Drago in. I know it's kind of a face move, but it seems really heelish. Kind of helps Melissa Santo Santos up. My only hope is that this doesn't go to some stupid 2000 WWE love triangle thing. Because that, that, that's just unbecoming of Lucha Underground. But for the wrestling part, that was it. And again, and again, we have the kind of very traditional recap, uh, just about two minutes long, and then we get the ending. Use a hammer to open a, a forty. I love it. title match. 
I just found him out right there. That's weak. It will be mighty the moth. There's a set down at Teca Junior for the gift of the gold championship. And with this ending, I mean, Antonio Cuerno uses, like, a hammer to open a beer bottle. From a really cool-looking cooler, though. I'll, I'll give him that much. And then you have the Marty the Moth paying him off, and then it kind of says, Marty the Moth pulls out another stack of, stack of money and says, let's talk about something else. So, who knows what's going to happen. You know what? This was a really good, entertaining show. I want to see what happens next. And if you can say that about any show, you know you're somewhat captivated by it. You don't even have to be into wrestling. It's like, well, what's going to happen now? I mean, I think even when my girlfriend watched, watched Lucha Underground with me for the first time, I mean, she's never heard of Lucha Underground, but, but she's like, well, what's going to happen now? This is it, it even pulled in her, which, which is good. That's what pro wrestling you should do. Again, if you want to see Hobo Tom, well, at a wrestling match, Go up to NXT Sanford on September, Friday, 21st. I do want to see if... Oh, and I remember this. Again, Southern Pro Lucha Libre is eventually coming to town. And I'll show the Southern Pro Lucha Libre one day. I think it's just a matter of getting... Right? And again, sometimes if you go to wrestling matches, you get little cards like this. Okay, I know it's shiny. And then hopefully one day, we have right here, Amber Nova is in NXT. It'd be cool if it said Amber Nova. I'd be tickled silly, and I'd have to price borrow something from work. I could post it and say, yay. I should probably give it to my nephew. I'm being a little too old for autographs, and I just kind of give them to my nephews. I do like selfies, though, because at least I can put selfies up here. Again, I would like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Also, again, another programming note. On Sunday, I'm going to be doing a live stream. I have off Sunday. My first, I think it's the first Sunday I've had off. I think since the end of... Wow, I've worked like two months every Sunday. Jeez. Get back to work! But, again, so I'll be doing a live stream. I'll, I'll be setting that up probably today or tomorrow. Worst comes for a Saturday, so I'll let everyone know. I think it starts around 7. I'll try and be on about 6. I think, yeah, that sounds about right. Again, I don't know what pre-show matches there are. Again, watch a previous video and you'll see, well, not my prediction. I invited a guest in Dr. Keller, and he was talking to my girlfriend. I should talk to Dr. Keller about his attitude towards my girlfriend. I might have to have a death match. A hobo death match between Hobo Tom and Dr. Keller. That's something for probably, probably my 2000s show, my, or my 2000 view party. Which will probably be like a Taco Tuesday or a Taco Saturday. Ooh, tacos. Again, probably double. Tacos are good. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Also, feel free to email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Everyone have a good night. Enjoy. Bye. Hello, everyone. Oh, wow, I am on this. Uh oh. Pop open my beer ration. Yeah. Free advertisement, perhaps. American Pale Ale. I don't know the slightest and the best, but.
Oh, so good. Welcome again to the Hub Owners Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. Right back there, you see my little kitty cat? He's there. I kind of woke up from that because a lizard got in the house. And she likes to hunt lizards. So I kind of roused her from watching stuff outside. Go on a lizard hunt. But let's not talk about that. Let's talk about some pro wrestling. In fact, let's talk about Lucha Underground. But first, before we go into some Lucha Underground, let's have one you will be able to see me, Hobo Tom, in Sanford, Florida, at the Sanford Civic Center on Friday, September 21st for NXT. There's an NXT house show there. Should be interesting. Hopefully it's better than the one here in Daytona Beach. Hopefully security is better. Then I shall call them very bad things again, which I already apologized for. Ooh. But today's Thursday. You know what that means, folks. Beer ration. One can of beer. Has to be good stuff. And yeah, it was just Labor Day. So my paps, an American style beer. Shout out to Dan. Then paps blue ribbon. Decent stuff. But let's not that's enough about that. These people probably dock. Thankfully, I'm not monetized yet. Let's talk about some Lucha Underground. Again. This is kind of like the normal show, and it's good. And you have about a two-minute long recap. Aerostar knows the Kamehameha. 